All right, so we'll move right ahead, trying to stay on time for the Mumbai transmission at 9.30. So I'll, uh, I'll now give you a Western perspective on this uh, full thickness uh, techniques, uh, basically surgical notes techniques. So basically what we're witnessing in the United States is the, is the birth of a new notes, the traditional notes uh, focused on things like cholecystectomies or pancreatectomies uh, stalled but now we're seeing a, an evolution to a new nodes that breaches the muscular wall of the GI tract but does not stray far from the GI wall and focuses on lesions and procedures uh, near the, the, the wall of the GI uh, tract. So such procedures, basically, this, this era was ushered by POEM, but then it's giving off all these offshoots. For example, peroral pyloromyotomy to treat idiopathic gastroparesis shown here. Uh, submucosal tunnel techniques similar to POEM to remove with full thickness resection, as Dr. Jo showed, uh, uh, esophageal tumors such as uh, lamyomas or GI stromal tumors or uh, granular cell tumors, and then f through full thickness resection, a notes procedure, leaving a hole in the GI tract and achieving on block R0 resection for smaller, so some of the smaller sub-epithelial tumors that require resection. Uh, as I said, this, uh, this whole era was answered by really what is the first successful notes procedure in the world, which is POEM, uh, by Haru Inui's uh, groundbreaking procedure in 2008. Uh, we uh, followed in his lead and performed in 2009 the first uh, POEM in the United States, actually the first POEM outside of Japan, and we're now at 209 POEMs, the largest single operator volume in the U.S., but the procedure really caught rapidly the fancy of physicians around the country and the world, and you can see very rapid growth uh, from our center being the only one in 2009, and then three in 2010, four in 2011, six, nine, and then in 2014, there were all these centers that just started, uh, probably 10, 15 centers. You can see 28% are done by GI, um, by gastroenterologists, which is good, you know, we've kept our, our part of the pie. 33% uh, are multidisciplinary teams of GIs and surgeons, and 39% by surgeons. Uh, still, however, like I obviously a rare disease, the, it's, uh, uh, the volume is spread thinly with only two centers, our center in Oregon having over 100 cases, and probably five centers only having more than 50 cases at this point. Uh, we put a white paper together to possibly counteract this very adverse guideline that Joel Richter put in the American Journal of Gastro in 2012, which Blue Cross Blue Shield is using to hammer us with. Uh, he called poem, I don't know, investigation or whatnot. So uh, Chris Gostart, uh, myself, and Haru are on that paper. I use this extensively with payers because it it's almost has the strength of a guideline as it was put together by SGE and SAGES. It summarizes all the data up to April 2014. Interestingly, there have been another 30, 40 articles since then to reach a total of over 150 poem articles at this point. It also caught the fancy of the patients. Even before physicians in our New York area would send me patients for poems, people would find me through the internet and we, had, we have people now coming from 18 different states. We've done poems on people from 18 different states uh, in the United States and also multiple uh, foreign countries actually. And I can show you a, a glimpse of our data. This is the biggest series in the US now, 195 patients. Uh, you can see that uh, a substantial number were very elderly, 15 over 84 over 90. Half of them treated. We have done 27 failed Heller myotomies. Three patients had actually two Heller myotomies that failed and then uh, had POEM. Uh, pretty large esophageal diameters. We do do sigmoid patients like Haru showed you. Uh, 33 sigmoids, and you can see also the, the severity here. These are all people with mega esophagus, 34 of them, uh, or 18% of the series, and also very sick people, ASA class three, one quarter of the series, including people with critical aortic stenosis, heart failure, dialysis, and whatnot. And these are the res fantastic results. You know, it's really, it's really beat slap Heller completely out of the water. Uh, Eckhart score going from 7.8 to 0.2. And this just reflects every other series, uh, every other large series in the world. Uh, LES pressure dropping dramatically. And we have 126 patients followed over a year, up to five years. And the success remains very high. We really had uh, four failures. And they were all in the first 30 people, actually the first 
three of them are in the first 10 people we did when we're using different uh, techniques. So here, here's the mean length of stay, 1.9. Again, very, very favorable. No mortality, no aborted poems. See, many centers don't report that, but you know, we've never started the poem and uh, ab aborted or converted to a hell or something else. Uh, we only had one long stay over six days. This was a patient that was on steroids and could not get off them because of polymyalgia. And you know, there was the hissence of the tunnel with no leak, but we opted to follow him in the hostel with a liquid diet uh, until the tunnel was not relevant anymore to avoid any delayed leakage. But one bleed not from the tunnel, but from a puncture site on our suture device we used to close the tunnel. This was just uh, uh, treated with normal endoscopic hemostasis with uh, clips. Um, one pural effusion that was just watched Pain that requires narcotics once the patient leaves recovery is only in 25%. We had two readmissions uh, for poem. One was this bleed I told you, and the other one was something self-limited that uh, I don't remember, I can't read here. Patient with bleeding, and oh yeah, another patient uh, had some kind of um, pain. We brought her up and scoped her, and she had an ulceration at the G junction and was promptly discharged. So these were the two readmissions. There were four readmissions not related to poem. One was pacemaker malfunction. One was an anxiety attack with chest pain. Uh, really non-specific stuff. All of them went home in 48 hours. As I said, you know, offshoots started coming off. Uh, some pyloromatomes have been done, maybe 20, 30 in the US right now. But this is going to grow if it proves successful. There is uh, some question mark. But probably is not useful for diabetic patients, but maybe difficult for idiopathic gastroparesis patient. This is the first one done by Nui, probably the first pyloromatomy in the world done by Haru at Hopkins with uh, me and Muen uh, from Hopkins there serving as the gallery. Uh, it was a very good procedure. Uh, this was like, uh, what, two, three years ago, Haru, or at Sages? Yeah. And then. Um, Another offshoot that I find a lot more useful is removing tumors from the esophagus uh, using the submucosal tunnel technique, same as POEM. You tunnel down, but instead of cutting the muscle, you excise the muscle with the tumor, remove it, and then the, the fact that there's a full thickness defect here is irrelevant because it's within a submucosal tunnel. You can see here a case published by Haru, uh, big lyomoma extending and touching the trachea, resected, you, exposing the wall of the trachea, but all within the tunnel. I'll show you one we did recently that is uh, pretty aggressive. So this is a patient from uh, Winthrop that had a, a granular cell tumor that was 3.7 centimeters. This, anything bigger than two to three, uh, the guidelines recommend resection for granular cell tumors that can become locally aggressive. This one in particular, most, many of them are in the submucosa, but this one started, invaded the muscularis, so to speak, and extended into the left chest. You can see the tumor here over the aorta, between the heart and the aorta, into the left chest. You can see esophagus here and tumor here. And you can see on EUS and on endoscopy. So we're doing, we're using the tunnel technique. So we are gonna start four to five centimeters proximal to the tumor. You see the tumor is near the G junction. There's no really way to remove this without esophagectum. It's too, too much of the circumference of the lumen for a thoracic surgeon to be able to save the esophagus without leak, risking a leak or, a, or an obstruction. So anyway, so we inject like a poem four or five centimeters proximal to the tumor and then we dissect, um, we dissect the submucosa similar to a poem. So muscle is in the bottom here. You can see the circular fibers here and then the mucosa is there. So we dissect down to the tumor. You'll see, you'll see the, the edge of the tumor up here, right here. And then what we do is now we dissect between the tumor and the mucosa to separate that surface. Again, respecting the tumor capsule here. And then we're gonna turn the, our attention to the other side. See, now the tumor is freed from the mucosa. And then we're going to go to the muscular side uh, and start resecting the muscle that the tumor is attached to. So here we start to attack the muscle. These white fibers are muscle. And eventually you have to get into the mediastinum since the tumor was extending so far extraluminally. So here we are now 
through the muscle. A little underwater ESD sometimes helps. So now, so we freed it. This is all exposed lung there. And that, so the tumor is now sitting in the tunnel and we are removing it here. Oh, 3.7 centimeter granular cell tumor, see, resected with the muscularis around it. And then we go in to inspect the site. You can see the excavation cavity. So basically the aorta is here on the right, lung is there. And as I come back, you'll see the defect in the muscle. So this is all outside into the chest here. So it's all, it's all intact, nothing bleeding. That's the mucosa folding in from the tunnel. So now we are uh, removing the scope. So that's the defect in the muscle, mucosa. And now we are gonna close using the overstitch uh, suturing device. This is very useful. This is one, uh, giving you the Western perspective. This was one of the big aces we have up our sleeves compared to our Asian colleagues, because this is not available in, in Asia yet. And you see that what, what kind of innovative loop and clip techniques you use to close big holes. Uh, this makes it a lot easier. You'll see it demonstrated hopefully multiple times on the course. And there it is, you know, it's, the tunnel is closed here. Now, um, let's move to full thickness resection. Uh, as I told you, this doesn't, in some areas of the GI tract, many areas of the GI tract, a tunnel is not feasible. Uh, for example, in the proximal stomach. Uh, then you have to use this technique uh, uh, first reported by Ping Gong Zhou, who just showed you his series, uh, removing the tumor exists here in the stomach completely, leaving a hole through which you can see liver diaphragm and then closing with clips in this particular case. Again, we use overstitch in most of our cases. So I'll show you, an, uh, again, one of the more aggressive ones we've done recently of the, our full thickness resections. This was an 82-year-old woman with an extensive uh, history of ovarian cancer and treatments, making her abdomen a frozen abdomen, a very hostile abdomen for the surgeon. Um, now fully, you know, this was years ago. So uh, now she has a gastric gist that has been followed from 2010 to 2000. 14 and increased in size from 1.5 to 3.7. Uh, due to this significant increase in size and various uh, EUS features that were high risk, uh, resection was recommended. And in, again, in collaboration with our surgeons, we favored starting with full thickness resection uh, in the OR and then only converting or having an assisted resection if, if that was required given the very difficult abdomen. So uh, we proceeded with the resection. You'll see here, this is a, um, a fully extraluminal GI stromal tumor, but starting at the stomach. You can see the tumor here extending down uh, all the way to the left adrenal here, and also near the tail of the pancreas. So this, you can see how this is really true node. So this is the tumor, and you, these are the splenic vessels here and the tail of the pancreas. So it's very extraluminal. And there you can see the high risk US features. These are necroic, necrotic areas are considered high risk uh, features for aggressive behavior by this GI stromal tumor. So you can see it's very flat from inside because most of it is extraluminal. So here we use a snare to, ex to uh, remove the mucosa and expose the capsule of the tumor that will guide our resection. And then we start dissecting the submucosa and then the muscularis propria using the hybrid knife here. Now we're in the muscle layer. And you can see, once we get to the muscle layer here, this is the extraluminal tumor here. And this is the mental fat here. Now, we, now we're dissecting essentially the serosa here, or you know, the peritoneal membrane between the fat and the tumor, that's fat. Serosa tumor. You can see it has very nice capsule that GI stromal tumors do. 
at least the, the small ones that are amenable to this technique, uh, non-malignant ones. Again, this technique should only be applied to less than five centimeter tumors, if only for the simple fact that you can't really remove from the mouth anything bigger. And there, we are continuing. There's just a bit of a pedicle of muscle here that we are continuing to cut. And as we free the, the muscle attachments, we are essentially moving more and more into the peritoneal cavity. Now the endoscope is really operating from the peritoneum. That's the external surface of the stomach, and that's the fat. So now we are fully doing laparoscopy here with flexible endoscope. So, so this is notes. So we are, we are proceeding to uh, dissect the uh, serosa here. That's the final attachment that frees the tumor that now the, the tumor is just lying between the external surface of the stomach and the omentum. So now we're gonna grab it from the muscle, from intact muscle, don't want to touch the capsule in case it ruptures. So from, we'll pull it from the muscular propria back into the stomach and leave it there. You are gonna go out and inspect the stomach from the outside, make sure we didn't injure anything and the fat, and suck down the capnoperitoneum. That obviates the need of using a Verest needle or whatnot. So, so now we come back in, and you can see how close to the Z line this resection is. Again, that would have been so difficult for the surgeon. It's posterior and right at the G junction. It may have required even a subtotal gastrectomy. So uh, we removed that in this 82-year-old person with a hostile lateral. So this is, this is the tumor, and then we close using the overstitch. Again, it's a bit difficult because of the tangential location, but it's very doable. This is the, you see the Z line right there. So, so we close with the, with the overstitch. Again, this resection would have not really, at least in the West, we would not have done this if I had to depend on endo loop and clips to close something like this. It's just way too dangerous. But the overstitch at is very nice, uh, very nice closure. So the follow-up is, uh, this was done in three hours. Uh, patient just stayed in the hostel for three days. But the pathology was a gist with a mitotic rate of four, uh, essentially a low-risk gist. So basically, if you look, do look at the nomogram, the five years of cancer survival is over 90%, it's 82. So she doesn't really need anything else at this point. So here we go. These are, these are our 46 cases so far. We've been doing it since 2011. You can see esophagus 21%, stomach 59%, colon. We've done a bunch of the colon. I wish I could show you the videos. Um, again, ASA class, usually two, some ASA class three. Most of them EFTR, full thickness, uh, and some less stare. That, that's, that's the epidemiology of these neoplasms. You just get less of them in the esophagus than you get in the, in the stomach. Like in the esophagus, there are mostly small myomas, which if are asymptomatic, really, it's not recommended to remove them. So you don't get a lot of stares, really. Um, half of them general anesthesia, half of them propofol, procedure time 82 minutes, all the way up to 400 for that stare I showed you of this completely extraluminal thoracic surgery patient. Uh, size 2.3, but raising from one to five. And you can see, now we close always with suture, but initially we did some stairs at least with, a, with clips. Complete resection, R0 and 91%. Uh, then some of them uh, were piecemeal. Most of them because we, did, we had to remove a tumor that would not come out the mouth, it was too big. So we closed the hole, then we had to chop the tumor in two or three pieces with a snare to bring it out, which obviously makes a pathologic piecemeal resection. And you can see 80% were this type of tumors, GIST, lymoma, lymoma, sarcoma, swanoma, carcinoid, granular cell tumor. We, uh, the other few here, you know, in the US were not appreciated as benign lesions, otherwise we would have left them alone, but uh, they looked suspicious, we removed them, and they turned out to be mostly benign. Uh, length of stay, 2.5. We had one long stay, uh, that stir patient. Uh, developed an effusion that uh, we had to put a, a drain in. So, you know, that was the only long stay. Everything else in this is in the two to three days other than that stir uh, in the chest that I showed you. Again, more complications than POEM, but probably less complications than surgery for these tumors. And again, nothing major other than, you know, this long admission for this patient, of which, frankly, the last two weeks were really babysitting him because it's such a new procedure that we didn't feel like send him home and having him be non-compliant with a liquid diet and whatnot. So the last two weeks of that was really uh, 
observation. So now I, go, I you know, we do all these courses and you get these very enthusiastic young endoscopists who want to jump from being a very good DRCP to doing POEM and STER. Now, that's not uh, the safe thing to do. There is a learning curve, and I'm talking about this kind of learning curve. You, you really, you know, you haven't ever done ESD. You want to jump to POEM, you got to accept a much higher risk of low efficacy and complications. This is a video from my first ESD training. See, I has the day to prove it. September 2004, okay, this is an ESD, my first ESD ever using an IT knife in a pig lesion. So that's when we started, and then we did the epithelial lesions for three years, and then sub-epithelial excavations, not full thickness resections, for another uh, three years, and we started POEM in 2009 after all this, and then after three years of, I mean, two years of POEM is when we started doing these stars and EFTRs. So just keep that in mind. And we published a learning curve on POEM. There are two surgeons that published ridiculous 18 case and 20 case learning curves, and they were not doing four years of ESD or, you know, a thousand hours of endoscopy a, a year like me. So I don't know where they're coming up with those numbers. We published our numbers. We now have them giving lectures saying that, see, that proves that gastroenterologists are slow learners. So basically 40 cases to get competence which means that's when the mean procedure time for POEM starts dropping, and 60 case until you cannot improve your median procedure time anymore, meaning you have gotten as good as you can get in the procedure time. So four, four, 40 cases of POEM to competence, 60 to mastery, and that's for you know, somebody that has been doing several years of ESD before POEM. Or in the inimitable words of this consummate clinician from my country, Hippocrates, Obvious vrahis means life is short. It techni, that we can say this is technique or, or craft, that's where the word comes from. Macri, like macrosomia, you know, long, so the craft is long. Opportunity is fleeting. Experimentation, perilous, remember that. And judgment, difficult. So, you know, freely translated as it takes a long time to acquire and perfect one's craft, but one has but a short life in which to do it. <laughs> So in conclusion, POEM is the first successful notch procedure. It's ushering a new era of endoscopic surgery, laparoscopic procedures such as Heller, pyelomyotomy, wedge resection of deep-seated subepithelial tumors can now be performed endoscopically, but due to the advanced skills required to achieve secure closure, avoid severe bleeding and control insufflation, full thickness procedures such as POEM, STER, and FTR should be performed by operators with ESD mastery and the IRB protocol and surgical backup. That's my personal opinion. And since the life is short and craft is long, uh, please feel free to take more of the courses that I'm involved in. This is a course that is purely on suturing. I think that's the cornerstone development in doing, say, full thickness resection techniques. And we're doing this course in, uh, in uh, the ASG Center with Wang Song from the Mayo Clinic. Uh, and Sergey will be there. Uh, all suturing. You're going to become experts at suturing. Two days of suturing until it's coming out your ears. And then uh, the NOSCAR course has been a bit hijacked by, by some of us, like Chris, myself, who are interested in this and the luminal and notes, notes light techniques. So now it's veered from transvaginal cholecystectomy to maybe over half the course being on ESD, poem, notes, having people like Joe and previously Nui coming and giving their very latest. It's a pro probably a meeting of the minds. It's, this meeting where they actually say what they are working on right now and where is the direction of these things going. So I encourage you to take this course also in July. And I'll leave you with a final picture. This is a person who did, a boy we did from Kuwait, uh, the poem. And this is two days after the poem, right in the office about to fly back. You can see that you can't, you can't, you can't have someone like that after, after laparoscopic surgery. So he's very happy. Two days after the poem, having his liquid diet. And this is Rani. If you see here, please say thank you. All the videos you saw, distilling, you know, four hours into three minutes, that's her. That takes like tens of hours to do, right? And you saw the quality of these videos. And she's running everything in the endoscopy unit right now, which is a very complex undertaking. Thank you. So now uh, 